Hey guys, welcome to liveexercise.com. I'm Amanda. I heard from Julie and a couple other ladies uh, that we, need, we needed some yin. So I'm actually right there with you. I worked out with a trainer yesterday and I'm sore and I know that a lot of you do the chiseled, the, all the other exercises on this, on this website and that we really need to restore in yoga at times. So that's what we're gonna do today. Nice 45 minute holds. I've got my phone here so that I don't get too carried away and keep you there for 10 minutes. I'm really gonna hold us for three to five minutes in each pose and really take it down a notch. Focus on breathing, chilling out, and a much more restorative class. So before we get started, um, let's do some pranayama. So just kind of peel the flesh away from the sitting bones. Sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna use your right hand and use the ring finger and your thumb. We're just gonna do a few in and out, um, alternate nostril breathing. I actually did this, uh, I was at a yoga journal conference this weekend, did this at 8 a.m. on Saturday. It was before I had my coffee and I was freaking out because I didn't have my coffee yet, right? Did some pranayama and I was like, I don't need coffee, I need to do this more often. So uh, hopefully you have the same experience. So go ahead, right hand, ring finger, thumb. So we're gonna do alternate. We're gonna inhale on the left side, exhale on the right. And just a few in and outs like that. Not too, not too crazy, don't worry, we won't be here too long. So go ahead and, and remember in pranayama that it's not about like tensing everything up, trying to get as much breath. Just a natural breathing, just easy flow in and out of the nostrils. If one side is a little stuffier than the other, it's normal. Don't worry about it. Don't make it mean anything. So, <coughs> excuse me. So right thumb to the right nostril. Inhale through the left. Ring finger to the left nostril. Open up the right and exhale the right. Inhale right. Switch, exhale left. Inhale left. Switch, exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left, inhale left, exhale right. One more, inhale right, exhale left. Good, palms are on the knees, just close your eyes, sit up nice and tall. See if that got the blood going, got the focus, energized you maybe a bit. That was just a really short introduction. There's so much more, but we won't get into it today. If you do want more pranayama, let me know and, and we can continue to explore that. So let's go ahead and uh, lie on the back. Soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. <clears throat> so just a nice hip opener, nice inner thigh opener. Just kind of bounce the legs up and down a few times and then just feel Gravity, pull the knees down. There's no effort here. Just let the palms fall open next to the hips. Close the eyes and breathe. And you can kind of keep the soles of the feet gently touching, holding themselves together. But if it's, if it's creating any type of tension in your inner thighs or activating your legs too much, then, then don't worry about that. And then bring the palms on the ribs, the rib cage. So it's kind of on the outside of the rib cage. Think about your ribs like a butterfly. So we're gonna inhale in and out a few times. So inhale, let the ribs open up, kind of like butterfly wings, and then exhale. Use your hands, the strength of your arms, to exhale and push the rib cage together. Almost like you're kind of turning on your core too. You'll feel it kind of exhale. Good, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, two more, inhale, and exhale, 
Last one, inhale, let the ribs open up. And exhale, use the strength of your arms to push the rib cage together. Let the hands fall by the hips again. So hopefully you were able to feel that, really cultivate the core and then see if you can get that same action with the ribs, kind of flowing the rib cage in and out like a butterfly. See if you can do it now without the help of your hands. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Two more. Good. Now gently bring the hands to the outside of your legs, draw the knees together. Heel toe the feet apart, just countering that action. So we're gonna keep the outer edges of the feet down and just drop the knees in towards one another. Should be a really nice opening on the outer hips. If you don't feel it enough, you gotta take your feet a little bit wider apart. So just kinda drop the knees in, breathe. One more. Good. And then just kinda hug the knees into the chest. Circle the ankles. So rock yourself up and down and come into a 90-90 with the legs. So <clears throat> your legs are at a 90 degree angle on either side, kind of like a, a Z almost, I guess. Feet are active <clears throat> and just start to walk the hands over that right leg. We're going to do the right leg first. So right now you're going to feel it if you're sore like me, you're feeling it all over the place. Um, inner thigh, outer hip, wherever you feel it is exactly where you need it. So don't get too attached to um, <clears throat> where, you, where you feel it or need it. And just kind of drop your head. See if you can, so yin yoga, we hold the poses longer. That's what it's all about. So I'm actually gonna set my timer so I don't get too carried away. We're gonna be here for three minutes. Sounds like a long time, but hopefully it's not, not too, too much. So the, the point of this, and it's really countering everything we do in our power yoga, where we, where we engage everything, we really control the body. Here in this yin, it's like surrendering everything. So the more and more you just kind of hold the pose and surrender, you'll feel the body, gravity, just kind of take the body down as you learn to, to let go, as you learn to just stop resisting. I, I find this type of yoga one of the most difficult types of yoga because I'm used to go, go, going all the time. So, and I, I also find it the most valuable yoga. So I find that when I practice yin, you know, regularly, maybe once every other week or so, every week if you can, it actually helps my power vinyasa because I'm able to breathe more calmly I'm able to surrender more when I do need to in my power vinyasa. And I'm much more aware of my body after practicing yin. So take that for what it is. Hopefully you, you can enjoy it as well. <clears throat> if it's difficult, it's okay. Don't worry. Doesn't mean this is gonna be easy just because we're holding the poses longer. If your left hip is lifting in this guy, it's okay. Just let. Just let your body, don't get too attached to what you think you're supposed to be doing. See if you can just kind of let your body go where it needs to. It may even be nice to let the palms fall open and just kind of fold over that right leg. It's almost like a pigeon variation. So in this yin class today, we're gonna focus on hips and shoulders. Soften the neck, keep tucking the chin in. Maybe you can bring your head down. If you don't have a block, you can bring a pillow, something like that. It's always nice. Keep breathing.
So we're still practicing that Ujjayi breath in this yin class, still focusing. It's actually easier to focus on breathing when we're not moving so fast. So see if you can keep that calm, steady Ujjayi. If it starts to get difficult, notice if your breathing starts to get more intense. See if you can try not to match intensity with intensity. So you actually want to soften your breathing. And there's our timer. You're, you're going to love that sound. <laughs> I know I do. So walk the hands over to the right. So now we're going to kind of add a little twist. Now you may just walk it over that right leg, or you can bring the left hand behind the right elbow. Kind of get into a little deeper twist. Maybe you can bring your left ear all the way down. If it's too much and you're kind of cranking your neck, you can always put a block here. That's nice, and it'll keep your head elevated. Breathe. We're going to be here for two minutes. Let the left palm fall open. You may need to keep a little pressure in your right hand, but see if you can try to soften that. You may feel yourself rolling over to the right a little bit more. That's okay. Continue to roll that left shoulder away from the ear. Notice that, my, so my body's actually kind of inching itself. The more and more I learn how to let go, I'm getting deeper to the floor. So just let this feel good. I actually find that practicing yin sometimes is more difficult to stay present because my mind starts to go as we slow down the body. In vinyasa, there's so much to think about on the mat that I have to be present. I have to focus on every tiny little move in my practice so that actually forces me to stay present. So in this yin, where we're, we're softening, we're holding poses longer, we're doing less physically, sometimes it feels like, my mind starts to go. I don't, I'm sure everybody else is experiencing that too. So see if you can notice the thoughts that come up, but don't make them mean anything, and see if you can kind of acknowledge them and then just let them kind of float away. Oh, there's our timer. Slowly come out of it. Good, and then just kind of straighten that right leg. Ah. Bring the, you can straighten the left too and just kind of shake it out. And then bring the left foot to the right inner thigh. So Janu Shasana is one that we do a lot in our vinyasa. It's one that we really fold forward and we reach for that foot. What I'm asking you to do today is not that. <laughs> so see if you can just, yes, you're gonna fold, but don't be too attached to the destination of your foot. See if you can just kind of let your palms fall open, your forearms fall open, and just fold over that right leg. I know for me, I'm gonna feel it opening up my lower back. I'm already feeling it. So see if you can just let that be. We're here for two minutes. It's also nice to get into the back of the leg, all that hamstring, all that good stuff. So, and then, so I just caught myself, I was flexing my foot because I'm so used to flexing my foot in Janyu, in, in Vinyasa. So just let the foot go where it wants to go. Just let it flop out as little control as possible. And keep tucking the chin in, letting the head bow, letting the neck muscles soften. It's okay to round your back. It's okay if you start to kind of roll over the left. I know in vinyasa we're always trying to pull the right ribs back, pull
pull the left ribs forward and really square ourselves over that leg. Today, don't worry about any of that. Just soften, let go of that control. If it starts to get challenging, ask yourself, why? If you want to get out of the pose, know that this is the work. It's, he, it's your work to just stay in these poses, to continue to breathe, knowing that this is where change happens. So what's lovely about yin is that it actually gets into the fascia, an opportunity to get deeper into those, those muscles so that not only are we working externally, but we're really going internally with these guys. So keep breathing. So often notice if the lips, the eyes, the forehead. Here's our lovely harp. <laughs> it's good. You just kind of circle the ankle, shake out the legs, and we'll switch to the left side. So 90-90 with the left foot in front this time. And just kind of flex the feet. So find that 90-90 first, just so you know where you're at. And then don't worry about it and just walk forward. If you start to roll over to the left or the right, it's all good. It's no big deal. And just walk it forward. We're here for three minutes. So I was at a yoga journal conference and this past weekend they were in Hollywood, Florida. So grateful, so lucky to, to have it be here in our backyard. And I did all these workshops with famous yogis, Sean Korn, Dharma Mitra, Rodney Yee, all these, all these really well-known names. And what I learned being a student this weekend is that so often, here in South Florida, we complicate, I know I complicate things, sequencing, all these things. And, and these teachers that have been doing it for 20, 30 years have completely simplified it. You hear me say a lot of times, less is more. Well, I certainly learned that this weekend. I was with Sean Korn for two days and we did hardly any um, really rigorous sequencing. We did simple Surya Namaskara A, B, you know, those sun salutations. And we slowed it down so much that it was so physically challenging and exhausting. So this is actually really appropriate that, that you guys requested yin because <laughs> it definitely was at the right time for me. So oftentimes we, we think we have to add all these things. We think we have to do all these twists and all these things. And, and yeah, sometimes they, that feels really great. I don't want to make that wrong because I, don't get me wrong. I love a really rigorous um, practice. But it's about the balance, right? So making sure that we're, we're still allowing our practice to be simple, to be restorative like this, to, to do less some days. Breathe, notice if you can get a little deeper into this left hip. And then slowly come on up. And just start to walk your body over to the left a little further. Again, you can, so we're kind of adding a nice twist. You can just drop to the forearms. 
You can bring your head onto a block, a pillow, something. Or you can bring your right hand behind the left shoulder, uh, excuse me, left elbow, and kind of drop onto your right shoulder. Maybe bring your right ear down, and we're here for two minutes. So your legs may have to adjust a little. You may have to roll over to your left a little more. D doesn't matter. Go where you need to go to feel comfortable, safe, and still and peaceful in this posture, knowing that it's, it's not easy. I'm certainly not saying that, but can you find peace in adversity? Can you find peace in challenging situations? Trusting that these are the tools that we learn on our mat that are so valuable to the life that we live off of our mat. And it's all connected. So notice if you're, if you're bracing yourself, if you're gripping, if you're trying to protect yourself, if you're, if you're getting fed up when it becomes challenging and you're wanting to just come out of it and you can't focus, you can't stay still. I guarantee however you're acting, however you're behaving on your mat is exactly what you're doing in your life. Well, it's not always easy to, to think about. But see if you can continue to just notice how you're reacting, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Notice the physical. So I just was gripping my right hip. I have no idea why, but I caught myself and I was able to let it go. It'll probably come up again. It'll probably try to grip again, but that's my work to notice how, where it is and to soften and surrender and melt as much as possible. Knowing that just when I start to think I'm relaxed, <laughs> something else pops up. I'm aware of my, my right thumb or my, my left ear or my eyebrow or something. It's, it's crazy. Good. Slowly come up. Walk the hands in. And kind of shake out the legs, straighten out the legs. Ooh. One side is always more difficult than the other. All right, so left leg is, excuse me, straight. Peel the flesh away from that left hip. So that John you, so right, my habit is whoop, flex, and I want to go right into it. So soften out that foot, just let it flop out. It doesn't matter where it goes, your leg's going to roll over. It doesn't matter today. Just fold over that left leg, and we're here for two minutes. Let your palms fall open. Notice, even though that right leg isn't doing much, are you gripping the inner thigh at all? Are you doing anything to hold that leg there? If you are, maybe you need to adjust that foot, bring that foot forward a little bit more. And keep tucking the chin in, just kind of dropping the shoulders. So this is all upper and lower back for me right now. I'm not feeling much in my legs. So see if you can breathe through that back body if that's what you're feeling. If you're feeling it in your legs, breathe through your legs. See if you can soften, surrender, melt. Sometimes interesting to just kind of let your lips hang. So you're not trying to hold them next to your teeth. Weird concept, I know, but just let your lips kind of hang. Hopefully you can't see how ridiculous I look, but <laughs> I think you can. It's all good. doesn't matter. How's the breathing? How are the thoughts? And slowly, come on up. 
So you notice two, three minutes. It probably sounded like a lot when we first started, but not too bad, right? <laughs> Bring the soles of the feet together. Bring your feet way far out in front of you. Forearms come under the shins. Now normally we hold onto the tops of the feet and we really try to reach the head towards the heels. Don't do that today. Just let your palms fall open. Let your inner thighs. So your legs may want to start to grip here. That's going to be your habit. Let it go and just tuck the chin in and breathe again through that back body. If it's taking work to hold the soles of your feet together, then separate your feet a little. Don't worry about it. Again, let your lips hang away from your teeth. Let your jaw hang open. Keep breathing. Notice your shoulders. Are you holding them up at all? See if you continue to soften. slowly come up. Boy, that one felt like a long time. <laughs> For me anyway. <laughs> so cross your ankles. Let's come into child's pose. Big toes touch. Hips reaching towards those heels. Just kind of let it go. Hands can be reaching out in front. I like them back by the hips sometimes. Gets into a different part of my shoulders. So play with that. Not gonna set the timer here. We'll just be here for a few breaths. Even though this is a really nice one. If you can challenge yourself and stay here for five, 10 breaths, something like that, try it. Something about it always makes my legs fall asleep. Circulation, obviously, but it's okay. They'll wake back up. <laughs> Good, and then slowly, come on up. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a few cat cows and then get into the shoulders. So hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Inhale, drop the chest, roll the shoulders and sitting bones up. Look up. Exhale, round, tuck the chin in. Inhale, drop the chest. Get a nice stretch into those abs, look up, inhale. Exhale, round. One more, inhale. And exhale. Good. And then come to neutral. And just straighten out the legs and come onto your belly. <clears throat> so getting into the shoulders. First one, we're gonna bring the hands out wide. Make sure your hand is in line with your shoulder. You're gonna soften your butt, soften everything. First one, we're going to have our left ear down. Right hand comes under the right shoulder. Make sure your left hand stays in line. It's not going to move. And then you're slowly going to ask for permission and roll over to the left. 
You may want to bring your hips over to the right so you can roll onto your back more. And we're here. If you're not feeling much, I'm going to set my timer so we're not here too long. <laughs> if you're not feeling much, you can start to bring the back of your head onto the mat. You can start to interlace your hands, your fingers. Maybe bring one foot down at a time. But remember, we're here for longer than usual, so you don't want to push it. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm, I'm being a little conservative right now. I know I can go further, but I know I can't go further and hold it for two minutes. And again, remembering that yin, it's about restoring. It's not about pushing. So if you feel like you're pushing, soften. Breathe deeply, close the eyes. Notice your toes, your legs. Now you kind of have to hold yourself up a little bit in this one, but you don't need much to stay here. So be mindful of how much control you're using. Good, and then slowly back out of it. Lie on your belly again and swivel your hips back into the center to the midline. <clears throat> and then walk your left hand in. So come on up onto the forearms and then bring your right hand under or behind your left elbow. Drop that right shoulder down Stay here and bring your left hand along the side, along your hips, and then your right ears down. Now this feels easy, <laughs> but we're here for three minutes. So keep, well, I guess two. Let's stay, let's, let's do two. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, right? <laughs> so see if you can kind of pull that shoulder down, lengthen through your neck, and then just surrender. Palms are both facing up. Legs are soft. Keep breathing through the back body. Should be really nice right under that scapula. That's where I'm feeling it. If it's somewhere else, you're doing it correctly. It doesn't matter. If you're feeling any tingling in that right hand, it's totally normal. This is perfectly safe, so don't worry. Mine's starting to go a little bit. It's okay. And 
Saved by the bell. <laughs> so use your left hand, bring yourself up. Go into the other side. <clears throat> so left arm out. Fine, that's the right arm, isn't it? Yeah, right arm out. Turn your right ear down. Make sure it's in line with your shoulder. And we're going over to the right. Again, you're not pushing it. Roll over. You can kind of swivel your hips over to the left a little bit. That's helpful. You can bring one foot down, both feet down. Take it easy on yourself. And keep working the back of your head onto the floor. Or maybe you just keep that right ear down. So I know I'm, I actually, my neck starts to crank back and I'm now using my neck muscles to hold my head there. So if you catch yourself doing that, don't worry about it, just let it go. If the front of your shoulder feels like it's gonna pop out like mine is, it's all good. Notice your reaction. This is our work. The most advanced yogi is not the person that can float up into handstand or can put their foot behind their head. It's, it's nice, it's fancy, it's impressive, maybe. But the most advanced yogi is the person that can stay calm no matter what's happening. So maybe it's your husband, your wife you get into a fight with. How do you calm yourself down? How do you not react? Somebody, somebody rear ends you, right? How do you react? Do you get out and start screaming? No. If we do, oh well, we learned, right? We know how to do it better next time, but see if you can continue to keep that calmness about yourself. Ah, two minutes. Goody, goody, roll out of it. Laying on your belly again. <clears throat> Walk the hands in so you're on your forearms. And then bring the left hand behind that right elbow. <clears throat> try to pull. So right here, my, my shoulder's cranked up. So try to get that left shoulder under you a little bit more. You can kind of lengthen through your neck to set it up. And then let your palm fall open. Let the right hand fall open. Where's my timer? Two minutes. Let your heels just kind of flop out. Your legs are soft. They're not doing anything at all. Close your eyes. Keep that left ear down. Notice, so my, my shoulder, I was, I was trying to hold up this right shoulder for some reason. Just drop it. If you out there have any trouble sleeping, yin yoga is a wonderful practice really where we catch ourselves, just noticing where those gripping patterns are. You'll notice as you start to practice this more, and then you put your head down on the pillow to rest at night. Practice these same principles that you find on your mat. So notice the, the jaw, the fingers. I catch myself on a really stressful day when I've been running around all day, and then I try to rest. I'm like, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I feel my body still going. I'm like, what is this? And I have to continue to practice this yin yoga to, to soften, to surrender. I usually don't have much trouble sleeping, <laughs> ever. <laughs> but there are days where I do have to practice this. So hopefully that's helpful to those of you out there that do have trouble. I know it's a, it's a thing that a lot of people suffer from. And I promise the more yoga you do, the much easier it will become to surrender, to, to rest, to slow down. Breathe. If the hands are shaky or anything like that, just, just acknowledge the sensation you're feeling and then see if you can stop reacting to that sensation. It's just sensation, right? 
some of us have to do a lot more to get the same sensation than others. It's not right or wrong. Keep breathing through the back body. Ah, two minutes. That was a good one. <laughs> Slowly come out of it. And actually, let's just roll onto the back. So right from there, nice, easy transition, rolling onto your back. Both feet down, and just lift the hips for a nice, gentle bridge. I meant to bring a block, and I forgot, but hopefully you have a block at home. You can just rest your block right here on your lower back, right, um, right on your lower back, right above your sacrum. If you don't have a block, you can, if you are flexible enough, you can prop your elbows, your hands under your hips, and then just kind of let your, your hands take the weight and let your legs go. If that's too much, you can a bolster, anything like that is nice. Or you can just keep your hips elevated and interlace the hands behind your back for a regular bridge that we do, usually do. And I'd encourage you, if you have a block or your arms, you can just kind of rest. Let your hips just sink into that supportive material object, whatever it is. Keep bringing the chin away from the chest. And then slowly bring the knees together and lower your hips. Then just let your palms fall open and bring both knees over to the right. Bring your right foot on top of your left knee. And then just soften. See if you can try not to hold. So it takes a little bit of hamstring work to keep that foot there. But see if you can just use as little effort as possible to keep your foot on top of your knee and really get into that outer hip. Should be a nice twist too. Breathe, soften the upper body, the jaw, the eyes. So although this was restorative, it's hard work. Give yourself some credit. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I need to do something else after that. No, that's not the point. The point is to be satisfied with less. Sometimes I feel exhausted after practicing yin because I know I've done so much work. So if that's how you're feeling, it's all good. Maybe take a little nap after this. That would be nice, huh? <laughs> Good, release that top foot and just bring the, both knees up over to the other side. Bring the left foot on top of the right knee and try not to load up that hamstring a lot. It, it is, like I said, going to take a little bit of effort, but see if you can do as little as possible to keep that foot on that right leg and then soften your hips. Soften the legs. One more breath here. Good, release that left foot. Bring both knees up. And then just kind of windshield wiper. Hug the knees into the chest. Little rolling up and down the back, maybe some circles around. And then see if you can wrap the arms around your knees, grabbing opposite elbow. Soften your feet. Keep allowing your knees to come closer to your chest. If you're feeling pinching in the front of your hips, yep, I feel it too. It's normal, it's okay. The biggest thing here is that your hips want to lift up. See if you can try to keep your hips, your sacrum, that lower back, onto your mat. Breathe. And then release the arms. Just bring the soles of the feet together back into that Supta Baddha Konasana, which is how we started. Just letting the legs go, noticing if you feel a little bit more relaxation in those hips, a little more openness. Let the breath go and just in and out of the nose, the mouth. Don't worry about that Ujjayi breath any longer.
One more breath here in that Supta Baddha Konasana. And then just straighten out one leg at a time. Maybe the feet come way far out. You're way off your mat. It's all good wherever you need to be. Just let your feet flop out. The palms fall open. Shavasana. Inhale. Open up the mouth. Exhale through the mouth. One more. Inhale through the mouth, the nose, whatever. Exhale. Staying here for as long as you like, at least two minutes. Feeling the support of the floor, knowing you did your work, even though you didn't sweat, even though you didn't even do one chaturanga, it doesn't matter. This is a different kind of work. So enjoy it, embrace it, and know that you did your practice today. Soften the skull, the scalp. And like I always say, if you want to stay here, if you want to go right into a little nap on your mat, go for it. If not, you can start to bring some movement back into the fingers, the toes. Gently rock the head. Reach up over the head, lengthen through the right side and the left side. Hug the knees in. And then slowly come up into a comfortable seated position. Bringing the hands to Anjali Mudra as you bow into yourself. Recognizing the divinity within yourself and one another, I thank you for tuning in. Let me know if you want more yin. This was just a tiny little portion of what we could do with this practice. So if you're enjoying it, if it's restorative, it's, if it's helping you balance out all those chiseled workouts, all those weightlifting crazy stuff that you do, let me know. We'll keep doing it. Okay, guys? Have a wonderful day. Rest well tonight. <laughs> Namaste.